back. So we have the lovely Erica Lee here. Thank you so much for coming down and gracing our shores. Yes, I'm so excited to be here, especially in this space. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's a really cool space and we've got it thanks to our sponsors at Makari. They're our wholesale exchange getting into crypto. And yeah, we do our meetups and stuff here. We do all sorts of events here. We've even done an NFT launch from here as well. Oh, wow. So we fitted out TVs all around the side. This is a big Samsung screen that we've got behind. It's probably one of the biggest Samsung screens that you'll see yeah, it anywhere. Is definitely huge, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're here. And this is for our community show where we get to know people in the... Uh, the Web3 community, yeah. whether it's DeFi or NFTs. And I know you do a lot of stuff in the NFT space as a journalist, yeah. but we're here to learn more about you. And, you know, it's amazing that we've got this kind of global uh, reach to, to see someone like you here. But how did you get into the space? How um, did I get into this space? Yeah. yeah, it's a really interesting story because um, I started off as a journalist. I still am a journalist, but I started off as a journalist in the more traditional sense. So I was doing local TV news. And I studied journalism in college. And after that, I worked as an assistant at a Los Angeles news station. And that's when I decided I wanted to be a reporter, television nice. reporter. And at that time, you know, still now, there's not that many people of color um, on television, especially in America. And I yeah. see that in Australia as well. But at that time, what I really wanted to do was increase representation and change the type of stories that I was telling. And so I was doing that for a couple of years, uh, many years actually. Mm -hmm. And I lived all over the US. I lived in a lot of different states, Idaho, Oklahoma, Arizona. And those are wow. what you guys call probably like more rural areas. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I got a lot of my experience because when you're at these smaller news stations, you learn to edit yourself, write yourself, like write your own stories, set up your own camera. And it's not like in LA or New York where you have this whole crew with you. You pretty much do everything yourself. It's like and a startup. So, yeah, it's like a, it's a startup <laughs> of, <laughs> of of news, I guess. And it's fantastic. Yeah, and as I was, um, I was, I was working in Oklahoma and one of my friends, um, his name is Andrew Wang and he's like a big influencer now in the NFT yeah, space. But yeah. at the time we were both just journalists and he, he studied race and culture um, and he was a race and culture journalist and he was covering a lot of Black Lives Matters and, and he was kind of lost in his direction and we were kind of both lost in our direction and mm. he, he discovered something called NFTs, which now you know we're all obsessed with. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and I've never seen him happier and I, his life changed and we were talking and he was like, mm. you really need to get into this. And I just kept seeing on Twitter, like every day, like um, this was the time where Cool Cats came out. And so okay. I was seeing cats everywhere. And his was the upside down one, which was the one of one. And I just saw so many people interact and mm. be so connected. And I was just really curious. And then, but I just felt like at this time I was aware of what it was, but I still wasn't quite ready to take the plunge yet. Mm -hmm. So, but then I saw that my friend Lily, and she's the founder of Wild Pixies, and she okay. was also getting into Cool Cats as well. And I saw that she joined this um, project called World of Women, and now it's really yep. big too. But very out. well known. Yeah, yeah, it's very well known now. And they were having this contest where you write about a woman that's really inspirational to you mm -hmm. and you can have a chance to win a free world of women. And so wow. that was the contest that I entered and that became my first NFT when I won that contest. Oh, no yeah. way. Congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And at that time, you know, I was like, I n I've never seen that many women-led, women-centered, diversity-centered projects. I loved how they all had different skin tones. I loved how yeah. they had different hairstyles and they were just so centered on women. And, and this was at a time where I I felt that the tech, and, and still now, but mm. I felt like I didn't belong in tech or I didn't belong in finance or anything of that sort because like I was just, culture yeah, kind of thing, and I right? was like, I'm not good at all these things. But then mm. that kind of gave me that opening and it Love made it. me realize that, oh, you don't really have to be like this, like tech nerd or engineer or any anything to be in the NFT space. And so that's, that was one of my first communities and I got really into it. So Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. How long ago was that that, that, that it happened? was like in twenty twenty one. It's it doesn't you know, outside world, it's not that long ago, but in this space, that is like a long yeah, time. So that's world, that's amazing. They right? were like, that's not that long ago. Um and then I started freelancing. Mm-hmm. 
Andrew was also writing for 137, which is owned by Vayner. Yep. And so I saw that he was writing for them. And I was like, I want to write for them, too. And <laughs> just on the side, while I still have my full time job as a reporter. Okay. And I was as I was reporting, I became less and less interested in what I was doing full time. <laughs> And after work, I would just always be on like Discord yeah. and like Twitter and like just staying up the entire night and then like not getting enough sleep. And I was like, I have to do this full time. And so if that's you're staying up late at night, you're probably getting into the Australian morning hours. <laughs> so you're already was, connected with us. You know, I know. was, I was. All right. Yeah. And also like when people call like DJ and hours. So mm. everyone was up anyways, like even it's in America. Crazy. Yeah. We, we listened to Twitter spaces and stuff and we uh, listened to all these Americans like, isn't it late for you guys? <laughs> no, it's in DJ and hours. But you were saying at the start you know being a journalist of color and yeah. stuff um my cousin uh over there ashley she's a journalist in richmond virginia filipino um no yeah so she's doing that she hasn't had the the bug bite of of um web3 and nfts just yet she's seen what i'm doing you'll and stuff. have to show me because the community is so small i might have already oh seen fantastic her before so she started off small market too and then yeah richmond, virginia yeah so she's, she's just like what i did i think nbc or something there but anyway i think she's teaching now yeah. um now that she's got more kids but she was i don't know whether she's going to go back to it or if she's still active but yeah. yeah she's definitely one of the alumni so i'll make sure to put uh, her in touch with you shout yeah. out to ashley <laughs> um but then you mentioned you know getting um into the space and seeing what others were doing it's really interesting because no matter where you've come from like we find that it's not about molding yourself to fit the space this space is so nascent it's new yeah it's about how does the technology mold to fit all these new people coming yeah. in yeah i think it's much more about that and just across your journey of like interviewing different people and we'll get to all the links and stuff like that yeah. and the cool things you're doing but you know do you find that there are all walks of life coming into this space and you're meeting so many different types of people out there globally i guess yeah i know that there are a lot of web 2 brands going into web 3 and that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people are focusing on but there's just this huge community of people who are given second chances at building something for the very right. first time mm -hmm. people who are like yeah i was broke oh i didn't have a purpose i didn't even know like what i wanted to do with my life wow. and they're just people i met on spaces and mm -hmm. who've become my really good friends and they're all ages too so they're not just i've met a 12 year old i don't know if you know nyla she no. was um she's one of time's um first artists in residence but she sold out her collection which is called the long necky collection okay and she became like a multi-millionaire at 12 years old by what selling her art. And so That's amazing. There's, there's people from that range and then also mm -hmm. friends who are over 50 years old that we probably wouldn't have been cl as close as we are if it weren't for NFTs or yeah. um, Web3 and just people that and he lives in Japan. And so we like just talk and it's just it's just really funny to see how, you know, you don't know what they look like at first because mm -hmm. they just have their profile pictures and then you become so close and you realize it doesn't even matter what your walk of life is, what your what country you live in, what age you are, what your background, ethnicity, um, sexuality. It's all, it's all, it's all great. Yeah. It's it's all open, right? Yeah. Like we we have run a lot of meetups, and one of the things that we've heard in bits and pieces, and it's I'm I'm not saying it's bad that people are saying it. So they don't even mean anything negative by it. But if you look at it, it just tells you a lot about the culture, which is seeing that there's all walks of life in this space oh it's so nice that web3 is giving them a chance that they wouldn't ha normally have a chance in other places but that i think procreates oops, sorry permeates this <laughs> permeates this victim kind of culture which is you know we're the ones that are giving them a chance us in power they're not in power we're giving them a chance I don't think it's about that. I think we're giving ourselves a chance yeah. to witness and experience and feel what it's like for those other people that we normally wouldn't deal with in these other areas, whether it's in finance or art or other parts of technology where they're much more mature and you have these molds. And if you don't fit into one of those molds in banking and finance, yeah. it's not made for you kind of thing. And that's kind of what's been pushed. But Web3, because it's so early, it's like we get a chance to listen and it's more about the technology and the kind of ethos finding how do we put all of these different pieces of the puzzle together. And it's a great big experiment. But I was just curious, You, you we said, um, and you were discussing before, that you see some differences in terms of like the communities that you've witnessed over there versus maybe maybe it's different across parts of um, the US. I'd, I'd love to understand that. But also from what you've seen here, what, what are the observations that you've had? 
Yeah, and, and I just want to preface this by saying I love the U.S. and I love the events that we have there. <laughs> but just having attended NFT NYC twice and VCon and NFT LA and just all these NFT events and going to the meetup that I went to, was it two weeks ago or one week ago? A week ago. It feels like boss. It, it was only a week, week ago. ago <laughs> at Immutable. Yeah. And you guys were, you guys structured the panels. You guys talked about the Ethereum merge. You guys talked about DAOs. And the way that you guys talked about it, you guys were so in depth about it. I feel like the biggest difference that I've personally felt between Australia and America mm -hmm. and the NFT events is that a lot of the American events are focused a lot on uh, fanfare and presentation mm -hmm. and talking big and talking in metaphors and talking, I don't want to say in circles, but a lot of times you're like, yes, yes, yes. And then after that whole hour, you're like, I actually have no idea what they said, <laughs> okay. but I feel good. Like I, they, you know, community, utility and all these things. Yeah. But I felt like when I was at the event that in Australia yep. about um, the merge, you guys were actually going really mm. deep into the topics. You guys were getting really technical. You guys were actually talking about, you know, proof of stake, proof of work and how that would be different. And you guys were talking about like IP rights and all this stuff, like when you guys were talking with the lawyers. Yeah. And that's just stuff that I feel like maybe people are afraid to go deep into because they feel like they might lose their audience. Um, Maybe in America, but I feel like having attended so many panels, mm. there just weren't, there's just wasn't that much depth. And that's interesting. Yeah. And at, at the NFT type of events and stuff. So, a bit yeah. more. We, so we had people, we had delegates yeah. and shout out to Blockchain Australia and other groups and of Aussies that went there. I think there was like 80 plus or close to 100 yeah. that were there following those events. And I think we heard some similar things. A lot of the fanfare. That? Yeah, oh, at wow. the NFT NYC thing, which is interesting. And I think there's there's pros and cons to that. that I don't think it's neither good nor bad. It just addresses different audiences. Like mm -hmm. maybe you need those. I don't, not being there, and I know there were so many different events. Maybe they did have pockets of those in-depth yeah, discussions. but. Maybe it's an improvement point to find if people are interested in that, having an easier ability for people to see that. Fun fact, NFT NYC was created by an Aussie. No way. Yeah, so yeah. the guy that runs it who lives over there, he's a um, former executive from here in Australia mm -hmm. from the telecommunications space, um, but he lives over there and he's created NFT NYC. I guess it's just become bigger yeah. than him, him yeah. himself <laughs> yeah. you know, with all the amount of speakers, like thousands of, uh, 1,000, over 1,500 or something 1500, like that. yeah. How do you get to all of those events? I mean, we have events here in Australia where maybe there's three different rooms at the one venue and you're <laughs> like, well, which one do I choose from? People I heard were traveling from all parts and I've been to New York a lot for work before, you know, previous to Web3 Life. It's so big, Manhattan Island, trying to get around that if, yeah. if it was all just there. I don't know, did they go into Brooklyn and other yeah. places? Yeah. I did. Or just the satellite oh. events, but... The main events were it's I, it's funny because a lot of people that came from Singapore and Southeast yeah. Asia and just Asia, um, they they didn't go to the main convention. They just went really? for the satellite events, which a lot of projects and companies run out places, throw huge parties, and just like the board ape kind of parties and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, I did go to that. That oh, was crazy. You? Yeah, it was raining yeah. that day though, but it was still awesome. Okay. Yeah. It was indoors though, right? Like. Um, the, the, the part where they did the performance yeah. was on a rooftop. So when it was raining, everyone was wearing raincoats, oh my but gosh. the other parts were indoors. At least it wasn't snowing. <laughs> cause it I wasn't know snowing. Cause yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause how heavy snowing. the weather gets there and stuff. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, no, but that was an amazing event. Okay. And I feel like all the events were really, really well done in terms of just like the presentation and the aesthetic and yeah. the money that they poured into the experience, the immersive experiences. Like for for example, I went to the Azuki party yep. as well and it yeah. was just crazy. Like I just felt like I was in a different world. Holy and they moly. brought food from like they brought like desserts, they brought boba, they brought like I'm there for the boba. If there's if, <laughs> if anyone wants to do one of those kind of events here, if you bring Bob Boba, I will be there for you sure. Guys call bubble, it bubble tea. tea. Bubble tea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, no, and, and that's something that's really great about Australia. You guys are really down to earth. And I think that is not only in Web3, but just from being here, I can see that in all the types of people. And I was talking with some people, they were saying, yeah, we don't like it when people are boastful. We actually yeah. think it's a turnoff. And so that's really funny, especially from someone who's from LA. I feel like that's 
that's a very default type of. I was going to say yeah. it's the only mode there, and you kind of have to be <laughs> elbows out, don't you? A little bit over there, depending where you are. It's probably the more in the major cities, right? Yeah. Because you work rurally. Yeah, I worked rural too, and so I felt like I had to adjust in those ways as well. And now I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm well versed in different audiences. But fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, it gives you that perspective, and I think that's the interesting thing, and in why so many different voices coming into this space, and it being such an open community that those voices help give you a new perspective that you might not have had. Like there's a difference between people that might be really anti something or just not for no f fault of their own, just ha being ignorant to the other pers uh, uh, perspectives that are out there. So I find it really interesting that this space breaks down a lot of barriers that are normally there in web two and offers this new chance for us to kind of build together. We were doing a podcast before it's talking about what's the difference between building in web two versus web three. And it feels like in web two, you kind of close things off. You don't show anything. It's all in stealth mode until you're ready to go out to customers. People do not like that in web three. They People, need to know everything. That's, that's going. it. Yeah. They need to be part of the journey yeah. to be at least given the option to take part and participate by, by it's the, like you're quiet in discord for one day and they're like yeah. why are you rugging us? oh exactly <laughs> and you know running communities and stuff like yeah. if, if and especially as we've been so busy because we used to just do everything out of sydney then we started going into melbourne and brisbane and now we're in other states and flying around and now that it, like you can't be in discord all the time and stuff like yeah. trying to run this thing so it does feel we feel like we're not there in the community enough sometimes but you know it's there's so much happening every hour, minute, second, there is always like something going on. But just on the community side of thing, um, do you get into the discords much yourself over there? And are they like global kind of discords or are there, are there these kind of association groups, like say in LA where you're at now, like here, you know, it's the Australian DeFi Association. This is the Sydney chapter, for example. Yeah. Do they have that kind of national kind of thing or at least regional or city type association for blockchain or NFTs or Web3 in general? Yeah, I think it's different here because you really have to gather the community together. Yeah. I think in LA or New York, it's, it's just too many that oh, you can't okay. really do that in like one group. Yeah. But I think it's really focused on different projects. And okay. so um, I, I used to be part of uh, the project Little Lemon Friends and I was um, on the team. And so um, it, it was a great experience to know how to run a project and launch a project. Oh, fantastic. And I was always on the Discord and we had different channels for like people who spoke Chinese, people who spoke like different languages. And oh, so fantastic. it was great to be around that. And I'm, I think I'm just in way too many channels, to be honest. I don't, like, think, I think, you're, I don't think you're you're properly DeFi until there's too many channels in your Discord. It's too many. <laughs> and like it really stresses me out. And like I had to turn the notification because I was like hearing it yeah. in my sleep. <laughs> like that thing i don't know yeah but um yeah no like i feel like most projects that i'm mm -hmm. i've been in they all have like those little like sub sub channels of like different countries and i love that and there have been la focused channels mm -hmm. like socal and like um oh, cool. the ones that i've i i just haven't been as active in them um recently but i did join them and oh, so they did have meetups as well so even the bigger communities have smaller pockets which is great well, that's good. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, being, uh, it's funny because as you said before, like we were getting more in depth in terms of discussions, a bit more nuanced rather than the fanfare type thing. I wonder if it's just a matter of circumstance of the part of it being the culture, like different cultures in a way, both Western, but, you know, civilizations, but different types of cultures. And like you said, we do tear down, we call it tall poppy syndrome. The what? Tall oh. poppy Oh, because um, like that tall flower, yeah, yeah. So we tear those down. So tall poppy syndrome is the nature of Aussies to tear people that are doing, you know, overly well. Like, so we try to be a bit more humble really? with stuff. Yeah. So oh, it's wow. it's a bit of a thing here. Whereas I, I know that in the States, it's, it's different. That's celebrate. It's rejoice. It's, you know, there's a the whole patriotism movement and stuff like that. But, and that's all fine. But it's just interesting, given the different types of cultures that we've got, what comes out in terms of the communities. And I'm sure if we went to South Korea or across to Europe and all sorts of places, the different types of communities that would be built up. The point is, is that I think they're reflections of who we are and technology is gonna help us really find a way to make things better. Like this is technology. I think in a way, Facebook or Meta now, mm -hmm. seeing things like that and the Cambridge Analytica type yeah. scandals, 
it's really helpful for us that are building in the Web3 space. To be transparent. To be transparent, to know that we want to do better. And just on that, like, where do you kind of see things being built by the things that you're interviewing different people? Like, what are you kind of seeing in the space? Not to say that this is financial advice and a crystal ball, but do you see some interesting trends going on in the market over there amongst builders anyway? Yeah, I think I find it really easy now that I've interviewed so many different founders to be able to tell if they have a long-term vision or not. Nice. Yeah, and I think that it's not their fault necessarily because mm-hmm. the space changes so quickly that it's hard to even know what will be successful in the long term. And so some people are just like, we're just thinking about now. We're just talking. We're just a lot of projects just think about the launch and oh, then they just okay. stop. And then I think right. a lot of times like a lot of roadmaps are very vague and people like to to kind of cover that up by saying, oh, like we're still figuring things out, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I just feel like that's not like a sufficient answer anymore, yeah. you know? So, I want to know more for sure. <laughs> yeah, and what you said about like the cultures, I what I'm curious, and I don't know if, I can't say this is my personal experience, mm. but I wonder if like Australian-led projects versus American-led projects, they spend more, like American projects spend more money on marketing dollars versus mm-hmm. Australian because they care more about the way that it looks on the outside and versus you guys might have invest in more like technical parts of it. I don't know. Or like the back end or like, I, I don't know, yeah. but like it, it makes sense for say a university either over there in the States or here. So invites are out there. If someone wants to do that kind of study, cause I would be very curious. I would hazard a guess that it makes sense that there would be that kind of signal that we're seeing amongst if they reviewed a hundred random Aussie projects versus hundred random US ones and probably filter them. So they're around the same size and stuff. So it's an even kind of base that you would probably see that kind of stuff. Cause I think the culture definitely becomes part of this. So yeah, for sure. Um, um, my university that I attended after I had already graduated, I saw that they sent acceptance letters with iPads to what yeah <laughs> really yeah. so they sent out an ipad as the acceptance yeah. letter and stuff so what are the other kinds of uh projects like looking at the trends like we've seen some interesting things here more recently it's music and nfts being brought together before that it was things like Steppen and the move to earn space there's also pummel p-u-m-l which is another group out of australia doing that kind of stuff but over there i mean is it the same kind of things that you're seeing or are you seeing new types of uh NFT projects in your, you know, journey as journalist. Yeah, I think the move to earn, play to earn, just that type of is was something that I was seeing a lot earlier. Mm-hmm. And music NFTs, I feel like they're still scratching the surface and there's still so much more to do with music NFTs. Something that I've really been noticing is the rise of the digital, which is like the physical plus digital together. Uh, the other day I did an interview with Artifact who recently um launched their collection um, with Nike, Clonex, and it's, you have the NFT, and then you're able to get the physical version too, like the sneaker or the jacket or the vest, or, you know, this this whole like streetwear line that you can have both the NFT and the the actual clothing. So it's digital. Digital, yeah. yeah, And I feel like a lot of projects that I've been um, interviewing have been doing the exact same thing. And, and, And it's not anything that's, that's, crazy new Mm. but i feel like the way that people have executed it i don't think anyone has done it as well as artifact clone x we hear a lot about them here really in australia there's projects that are looking to do something similar maybe around the shoes and other forms of like that digital kind of connection whether it is a metaverse project or nfts like we're certainly seeing that here what about like in the do, do you do a lot of looking into the DeFi space or is it mainly on nfts or does that kind of blend into the journalism stuff that you're doing as well um what do you what are some trends that you're seeing in DeFi? uh so more moves towards like mainstream uh ways of so initially we, if you look back at bitcoin it, it was this and still is this form of global monetary kind of transfer that is uh relying less on the centralized powers yeah. and stuff and it just makes it easier to do cross-border kind of payments but then we're seeing more in DeFi moves into real world 
usage of blockchain technology, yeah. like how to solve problems amongst if you're trying to own a home, for mm-hmm. example, and tokenizing of real estate um, or, for example, using NFTs as more than just the JPEGs, uh, yeah. but actually creating something where they can be useful for invoicing and being able to have streaming payments. So instead of waiting till the end of the month to get paid, you can have these NFTs that you hold at basically pay you from whoever is your employer, or whatever kind of job that you're doing. So we're seeing things like that, that are um, web two problems being solved by mm. blockchain tech. And that's in that DeFi space much more now in the bear market. Cause before that in the bull market, it was just speculation. Right. In a way, there's still a lot of that stuff there, but it's been more about, well, how do we actually do this better version of a yield farm? How yeah. do we actually get make more money um, for people investing? It's like investment app, Robinhood on steroids, basically. <laughs> I've heard of other projects where another thing they're doing, rather than traditionally in Web2, someone gets paid and then they have to sort out and pay the other people that mm-hmm. might be their suppliers or in their stakeholders, the supply chain. Um, but instead of that, you can just have... Uh, as soon as a wallet is funded, it's just automatically making payments to the artists, to the people mm. that work on stuff. Are you seeing that in like different industries and stuff over there? Because I think Royal is doing something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, interesting. I I have heard a lot about people like doing that. I yeah. haven't interviewed anyone specifically doing that, but that is like a really, really interesting and amazing thing to see. We'll have to send people over your yeah, way. Like, yeah. it, you know, you cover the stuff over there in mm-hmm. the States, but... I guess now that you've been here, Mm -hmm. there's surely some interesting kind of projects that you'll have seen and you'll get to interview from, from, you know, across the pond. So, yeah, Yeah. we'll make sure we have to send that kind of stuff to you. Yeah. um, When the war in Ukraine first broke out, um, Andrew, he started um, his own um, project or DAO where he um, worked with a bunch of artists to um, just make art related to Ukraine. Wow, and then, right. And then he said it so that 100% of the money that he made would go straight to Ukraine and all those nonprofits. And so I thought that was super awesome because at that time, that was the only way that they could get money. Yeah, It's crazy. And this is the thing. In the a, blockchain, yeah. In a society where people are very comfortable, you know, we live in the Western societies, we don't have we haven't had to worry too much about wars and like conflict and stuff like that. And it's only when those things happen that do you realize that, oh, these are the issues with centralization. They can lock up your funds. They can do all this sorts of stuff. So people don't realize it until it hurts them. And typically innovation, it happens at the tails. People in the middle are very comfortable. The people that have made a lot of money and are the the higher end of society will probably dive in because they smell another opportunity. And it's the people that are at the lower ends of the global society that aren't, you know, the unbanked, the people that are in those areas of conflict, they're also the ones that embrace. And the middle just doesn't really do much until it really affects them. So I feel like education is a big thing that we need to do in this space. And you guys are definitely doing that with um, the journalism and stuff that you're doing. But what are your thoughts on education and, and getting more people to understand the power of this space? Yeah, I think education it, there's just so many different levels, right? I, lo- I think a lot of people are doing onboarding and it, it, it's starting off with, you know, how to set up a wallet and stuff like that. And then once people understand that, I don't think there's a lot of education in the, the parts that are more beyond that. Mm-hmm. And I think that because, I don't know if it's like the people who are already in this space or people like you who have already been in DeFi for a long time and then are, now we're in Web3, maybe they don't want to spend the effort educating because they already feel like they understand, you know? So I don't know if they, yeah. there needs to be like that middle, I believe. Um, I think there does. And obviously we've got this new understanding of how we can use tokens yeah. to help people better uh, in, well, incentivize them what, like to do action. like learn to earn or something? Yeah. <laughs> We're seeing a few things We're like that. We're seeing that a lot too. I yeah. feel like we need more. It's like learn to earn, but also like, you know, they, they have that whole kind of pay it forward kind of movement right. and stuff. We need to be doing stuff like that. Like I know that there are these things that you can't necessarily just get machines to take care of it. You need to incentivize humans to do these things. So there's got to be a better way. But um, I'm sure we'll explore more of that. But for now, like how do people uh, get in touch with you or how do, where do they see you on socials? Like uh, do you want to shout out your Twitter and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. So you can follow me on Twitter at Erica Lee TV, E-R-I-K-A-L-E-E TV. My Instagram is Erica at E-R-I dot K. KY and you can follow 137 p.m. is O N E 
one, three, one, and then <laughs> I don't know how to spell it right now. Okay, so one. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. One is in one, <laughs> and then three, seven, and then PM. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't know why it's named that, but um, yeah. Gary Vee named it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, he named it that because it's it's like a random time in the clock, right? And yeah. it just means that like you don't have to wait for a specific moment to do what you want in your life oh. at any time. So yeah. There you go, Gary V fans. You probably know this. I'm I'm a fan of Gary V. Oh, like you are. The, I didn't know that. I like the hustle culture yeah, in a way. Yeah. Like it was good up until a certain point in time, and like okay, <laughs> it's it's good. It's I'm okay with it now. But, um, you know, I everyone that I listen to read, um, meet, I always take the good things from it. And as much as like people are like, oh, hey, Gary, blah blah, blah he's too abrasive. It's like listen to the message, man. If you don't like that, there there is a good message kind of coming out of it. There's always something silver lining and stuff there. But love think, what yeah. he's done in the space. So. I think a lot of people meme him and like say, yeah, like if you're not sleeping <laughs> one hour a day, but like he never says like don't sleep. Exactly. You know? Yeah. People are like twisting it out of proportion, and like a lot of people say that he's like um, taking people's money, like manipulating the market. But I think through be friends like he's continuously been giving value to people who have held his nft and even me. before the nft yeah. thing the value that he was giving with his day-to-day vlogs so much free content so he much never free charged content. yeah it's like people it's easy to complain about stuff that do or do get he's giving it for free so you know take with it what you will you can switch it off if you don't want but if you want to miss out totally up to you but for now erica thank you for thank coming you so down much. Yes, have a great journey back thank you